All right, guys, so today we're going to do Splunk 101 and try hack me. So start by starting up your machine. And then once you start your machine, it's going to look like this here. So from here, we're going to click on this window icon and we're going to click on Splunk Enterprise and then click on Splunk Enterprise again. All right, so once everything is populated, you're going to see Splunk dashboard. So um, from here, I'm just going to uh, click on complete for task one. Now for task two, it says navigate Splunk. So for task two, it's just going to kind of like help you figure out the different type of uh, features. So up top, we have messages, we have settings, which is where you can add your data. You can click on different um, rows and, and um, tokens and users and then have your knowledge in your system. And then we have activities and then uh, we have search and reporting. This is where you're going to be able to search for a different type of events and logs and stuff like that. And then we're going to click on this call tool here. This is where you're going to see all of your applications. It's going to show the name of the application, the folder name, the version, the permissions, and all of the actions where you can edit a property and stuff like that. You can browse more apps, install app from file, create apps. So now we're just going to scroll down to task two and complete that. And now for task three, it's asking us what is the folder name for the add-on. So what we need to do is we need to add a application. So what we're going to do is click on uh, install app from file. And then we're going to click on choose file. And we're going to add the Splunk add-on for Microsoft Sysmon. So click on OK. Click on upload. All right. Once you do that, you're going to see your application, Microsoft Sysmon add-on, and the folder name and the, the version that it is. So now we're going to answer our first question, which is what is the folder name? The answer is going to be TA Microsoft Sysmon. I'm going to copy and paste this if, if I can. Nope, it won't let me paste it. So I'm just going to manually type it in, click on submit, and then what is the version? It's going to be 10.6.2, click on submit. Now I'm going to click on task 4, and it's telling us to upload the Splunk tutorial data on the desktop. How many events are in this source? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Splunk Enterprise. Matter of fact, before I do this, I'm going to click on settings. I'm going to click on data input. And then from here, I'm going to click on edit. And I'm going to scroll down and look for that Microsoft syslog. I'm going to do, knock this out first. I'm going to look for Microsoft syslog operation operations perfect and then I'm going to click on save so now we're going to do task four which is to upload the Splunk tutorial data on the desktop so now we're going to click on Splunk Enterprise and then we're going to click on add data now click on upload select file and then click on tutorial data click on open click on next uh, leave everything as default click on review now Guys, I recommend to remember the host and the file name because you might need this. Sometimes it populate and sometimes it doesn't. So make sure you know the file name is tutorialdata.zip and the host information is this right here. So we're going to need that really, really soon. So click on submit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to click on Splunk Enterprise and then I'm going to click on search and reportings. And then from here, uh, we're going to answer this question. Before I type in the information in the search, I'm going to click on this here and change it to all times. And here I'm going to add in the source equals tutorial, oops, tutorial data dot zip. And then I'm going to type in a asteroid and then I'm going to put that in parentheses. And then I'm going to type in host. And we're going to type in that number that we've seen on the other screen. Host is WIN. I think it was Q5. JJRDM876J. I'm going to click on search. Unbalanced quote. So I did something wrong. What did I? Oh, I forgot to add the quotations to the end. Let me just type that in there. Source is zero. What did I do wrong? So let me copy this first. And then I'm going to delete this and I'm just going to type in an asteroid and just going to populate everything. Okay, so once it's populated, we're going to have a total of 142,262 events. 
So now I'm going to repaste that information that I just had. So I'm going to type in source equals tutorial data dot VIP and then an asterisk parentheses and then host equals parentheses WIN 7J click on search. So remember, this is the source information and the host information that we just seen a minute ago. So once it get done loading, I'm going to have a total of 109,864 events. So we're going to type that in for the answer 109.864. We're going to click on submit. Now we're going to go down to task five. Task five is... So now it's asking us to use Splunk to search for the phrase failed password using tutorial data dot zip at the source. So we're going to type in failed password. You don't have to put this in parentheses. Failed password. Click on enter. And I got 33,253 events. So we're going to click on correct answer. And then now it's asking what is the source type. Uh, we're going to click on a source type. And it's going to be www1 secure. So I'm going to type that in www1 secure. Uh, click on submit. In the search result, look at the pattern tab. So now I'm going to look at the pattern tab. So this is the pattern tab here. We also have our statistics and our visualizations here. But all right, so we are. So now we're going to click on complete. What is the last username in this tab? It's going to be NYUAN. So we're going to type that in NYUAN, submit. Now search for password events for this specific username. How many events are returned? So now we're just going to type in. We already typed in fail password. We're just going to type in fail password for this guy, M Y U A N. Click on enter, and you're going to get the total amount, which is 16 events. So type in 16, click on submit. Now we're going to go down to task six, Sigma rules. Use the select documents feature. What is the Splunk query for Sigma APT29? So what we need to do is scroll up a little bit, and we're going to use this tool call uncoder.io so click on that and then what do we need to do use the select document feature what is the slump query for a stick with apt29 perfect okay so once we're here we're going to search for apt29 so just type it in apt and it should populate apt29 and what we're going to do is we're going to click on splunk right here and we're going to click on translate so now we're just going to copy this Go back to try hack me. I'm gonna paste that. I click on a submit. How I like to define Sigma Ru is basically it's a um, it's like a sim translator. So we can use Splunk and we can translate that code or the language into a different type of sim like uh, curators or elastic search so that's basically what it is so sigma the sigma rule will allow you to translate the language from one stem to another stem so just keep that in mind so now use the github sigma repo what is the splunk query for cactus torch remote thread creation it's telling us to go to github sigma repo so we're gonna go right there so just scroll up and we're gonna look forward in this paragraph here we go click on the repo okay so this is the github repository we're going to click on rules now we're going to click on windows and then we're going to click on create remote thread let's click on that let's try that yep and then we're going to see it right here six month cactus storage so we're going to click on that and then we're going to click on copy and then we're going to click on uncoder and we're going to paste it in here Delete all of this, and then paste it in here, and then we're going to translate it to Splunk. So click on Translate, and now we're going to copy this and add it to Trihackme, and this should work. Let's see. Click on Submit, and there we go. Yep. Now we're going to click on Task 7. For Task 7, we're going to create a dashboard. So click on Dashboard. Click on Create a New Dashboard. For Title, we're going to type in what is it? It's going to be THM dashboard. Make sure I spell it right. Click on create dashboard. So now, once you save your dashboard, we're going to click on search. 
because um, we're looking for what is the highest event ID so click on search change this from last 24 hours to all times click on OK I'm gonna click on the asteroid and see what pop up click enter and what is the highest event ID let me see I think I can just type in event ID so I'm gonna type in event ID and see what pop up I'm just curious event ID 3,328. So what am I doing wrong? Let me see. Okay, so I figured out. So we need to type in this right here. So source equals SM1 and all of this stuff. So let me let me type this stuff in and it should um, give me my answer. We're gonna type in source equals parentheses S M. Once you type in the first two letters, the source should populate. So we're gonna click on that. And now we're gonna add um, top limit equals five event ID and then we're going to click on enter and let's see what populate perfect here we go so these are all of my event IDs what I'm going to do now is just to turn it into a graph I'm going to click on visualizations I'm going to change it from line chart to let me see no I don't like that one to a pie chart no let's change it from pie chart to column chart okay so based off of this number 11 is going to be the highest so uh, what is the highest event ID it's going to be number 11 you have 7,500 counts no actually have 7,716 counts where right? everything else have less than 3,000 counts so we're going to put in 11 here for the highest event ID click on submit and now I'm going to click on alert now for task number eight alert we're not allowed to do this in the in the lab so let me show you if i click on alert it's going to tell me this feature is not available with your install set of license so we can't do task eight so just click on complete and then for task nine conclusion we're basically done guys so click on correct answer and if you did everything that i did um, you should have passed too as well. So congratulations.